Welcome to the Pro Yaki Report, Volume 1, Episode 28. Does moving to Japan really improve your batting average by 50 points? I'm Michael Westbay, your host. On an MLB Twins blog in the U.S. this past week, there was a sarcastic scouting report um, of Tsuyoshi Nishioka now that he's back here in Japan. The guy who provided this report obviously was on his first trip to Japan, his first baseball game. He was so impressed by the girls carrying kegs around, um, which tends to impress all gaijin who come here for the very first time. Um, But in his cute little uninformed uh, take on the game that he saw, there were two things that really bothered me. Oh no, somebody said something wrong on the internet! First of all, now, if the twins had actually scouted Nishioka before signing him, they would know that he played on an artificial turf infield at Chiba Marine Stadium and most of the Pacific League stadiums that he played at, and that he had this ability to make some fantastic plays on occasion and right after doing so, let the ball roll right between his legs. So this cutesy little scouting mission, it uh, clearly the guy doesn't know how Nishioka played here in Japan before going to Minnesota and playing on a all dirt infield now at Koshien had absolutely nothing to do with it. But the real burner that made my blood boil is, uh, you know, it's not just this guy, but many Major League fans feel the same way. But this guy said, when you play baseball in Japan, your batting average can go up by 50 points or more. Nishi is now batting 278. Okay, well... Nishioka is now in familiar territory with teammates who he can communicate better with and eating food that he is more familiar with. It's There are so many other factors than just what goes on on the field that can contribute to a player playing better or worse, depending on where he is and how well he adjusts. But just to see if there is even the smallest shred of truth in this troll-like post, I would like to take a look to see how the foreigners coming to Japan this year have done so far compared to how they did in the majors last year. First of all, Michael Abreu and Matt Clark had no major league experience. Their numbers so far have been a bit below what they played at AAA. They both had adjustments to make and show signs of improvement as they get more accustomed to living in Japan. Just taking these two as an example, the case can start to be made that Japan is a step up from AAA. Next, both Brooks Conrad and Ryan Spielborgs went from the MLB in 2011 to AAA in 2012. Both experienced huge boosts in production at the AAA level, although Conrad did so and his numbers just exploded. His performance for Hanshin has been much less than expected, so he kind of hasn't been seen from since the end of May. He's currently hitting 252 on the farm team in 30 games, which is probably not going to be enough to give him another chance with the top team without further adjustments. Brian LaHare had only one full season at the major league level, that in 2012 with the Cubs when he batted 259. He got off to a really good start hitting 306 at the end of April, 
but it's been a slow, steady drop since then as pitchers have adjusted. Lahare is striking out about 1.2 times per game. The 11 home runs has him ranked in ninth place in the Pacific League in the home run race, which kind of makes up for the strikeouts, but this is not a very good sign. Andrew Jones, one of the latest real major leaguers to come to Japan, performed amazingly well during the World Baseball Classic in spring, and that carried over to the start of the season. However, his batting average has dropped from a high of 263 just one month ago to its current 238. Granted, it's better than his disastrous 2012 season in New York, but was that 197 truly indicative of his major league ability? Niger Morgan started off the season appealing to fans with his energetic performance. Unfortunately, not with his hitting ability, though. After the first three weeks of the season, Morgan was batting a measly 132 and was sent down to the farm team after going 0 for 5 on April 16th. After returning to the top team on May 3rd, he's steadily been raising his batting average having three hits twice and even going four for five with a pair of home runs on July 3rd. Now hitting 282, Morgan has come a long way in the past couple of months, contributing a great deal to an offense that has occasionally been almost non-existent. I hope he can continue to raise his batting average up and beyond 50 points. If he does, though... Should that credit go to his major league experience or to the Japanese coaches that he talked with while he was on the farm for that uh, several weeks? Vinny Rotino has only, as the saying goes, tasted a few cups of coffee in the majors up to 2012 when he split 62 games between the Indians and Mets. While his 209 average may be up 61 points from his short 2012 stint, it hasn't been enough to have seen him since the beginning of June. It's kind of hard to call this an improvement over what he did in the majors. Jose Lopez has been hovering at about 300 since May. He took very little time to adjust to Japanese pitching and was hitting very well until complaining about a pain in his side on June 24th. He's been rehabilitating since. Casey McGee started off really strong, hitting over 400 at the end of April, but it's been a slow decline ever since. On the positive side, he's ranked third in home runs in the Pacific League and his 309 batting average is 10th out of the Pacific League's top 10. He adjusted to Japanese pitching before the pitchers adjusted to him, but the steady decline doesn't bode well. Fred Lewis only played in 18 games in 2012 for the Mets. During seasons with over 50 at-bats before that, his batting average ranged from 230 to 287, which makes his Hiroshima numbers rather comparable to his Major League numbers while he was healthy and getting regular playing time. It's really hard to credit him with a 103-point gain in Japan, though, based on the very few points in 2012. But despite Hector Luna's hitting 226 during his short 28-game stint in Philadelphia in 2012, I'm willing to accept that Luna is capable of any sized improvement in Japan. His major league potential is probably more along the lines of his split 2006 stints between Cleveland and St. Louis, hitting 286 
in his most full Major League season. Now, since he came out of the gates hot with Chunichi in 2013, hitting 400 as late as May 31st, Luna hit a measly, if you can call it that, 306 in June, taking 25 points of, off of his batting average and currently hitting a whopping 371 for this player and this player alone. I'm willing to accept that moving to Japan is worth an additional 50, 100, or even 150 points to his average. Luna is just that good a hitter. Okay, so what does all of this prove? Mainly, it proves that Japan is not necessarily going to improve your batting average automatically just by coming over here. It's got to be judged on a player-by-player -player basis. Now, some players start off strong, and as the league figures them out, they kind of go down in batting average. Others start off slow and gradually get adjusted to the pitchers and perform better. But, you know, there are even others that just never catch on and they're out of Japan before mid-season. So, no, you cannot just flatly say that moving to Japan is going to better your batting average from the majors by any means. And now it's time for the pocket calendar. John got to sit down with Nami-chan this week for Japan's Baseball Weekly Podcast, which will be coming out tomorrow, July 8th. Unfortunately, he didn't tell me what he said, so, just like you, I'm going to have to wait for tomorrow to listen to it as well. Otherwise, planned for the show, John says that he and Jim will be discussing the All-Stars, the, quote, top performers for June, and the home run races. Be sure to tune in. I know I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaku Report. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions for future podcasts, and I do have a bit of a backlog on questions, please feel free to comment on either the Google Plus Pro Yaku community or the JapaneseBaseball.com blogs Bayside West Yokohama post, which will have this video embedded in it. And with that, I hope you enjoy the show. Until next week, take care.